Face-to-face meetings are becoming more and more difficult. The Apostle Paul seemingly had strong feelings about face-to-face meetings with other believers. There's something completely different about communication when you are in physical proximity to the person you're interacting with. My wife Carla often says the phrase proximity changes perspective, and the Apostle Paul would agree. In one instance, Paul wrote this in 1 Thessalonians 3.10, as he and Timothy were writing and desiring to be with the church. As we pray very earnestly night and day to see you face to face and to complete what is lacking in your faith. Why couldn't he complete what was lacking in their faith through the letter? In our context, we might ask why we couldn't encourage someone through an email or a text or Marco Polo or FaceTime. But there's something obviously different about being face-to-face. This must be the only way to impart the type of strength Paul's speaking about in this letter. He says a similar thing in Romans 1, 11 through 12. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Again, there's obviously something Paul believes will take place that cannot happen even through an inspired letter. God created us to be relational, and not just in word, but in presence. I think this is why Jesus is both the word of truth and the living word. We didn't just need the written word of God. We needed the presence of our Savior, the living word. So he came to be with us. Paul and Timothy's physical presence allows them to strengthen and establish, encourage and exhort in ways they could not through a letter. It's the same for us. Physical presence and proximity allows us to strengthen and establish, encourage and exhort in ways we cannot through media, however advanced that media may be. Paul made the extraordinary effort to be with his fellow believers because he knew the extraordinary potential of being face-to-face with them. He knew the potential of joy, of truly being together in face-to-face fellowship. I say all of this because I want to caution you not to forsake or give up on the face-to-face time you are afforded as being a part of the church. We need real human interaction with physical proximity. We all know this intuitively, or at least we should. If not, let me suggest that there are certain conversations that, if at all possible, need to be face-to-face, eye-to-eye, in the same room, particularly when it comes to the community of believers called the body of Christ. How can you be one when you are never physically connected? When we choose to ignore or miss out on moments that we could enjoy face-to-face, we miss out on some of the relational depth and maturity we could be gaining. We end up surrendering at least some of the gravity and joy we might have experienced if we had been face-to-face with the ones God has called us to love as brothers and sisters in Christ. It could be a Sunday morning church gathering. It could be a conference. It could be a connect group or just a conversation over a cup of coffee. It could be a great conversation full of laughs or it could be a difficult conversation full of tears. The point being, whenever possible, pursue the deeper, more meaningful joys of seeing, really seeing, the ones you are supposed to love the most, and that is your spiritual family, the body of Christ. Let me encourage you to meet face-to-face whenever possible. You'll be pleasantly surprised how much more effective it will be to your spiritual walk and how much more beneficial it will be to your relationships.